On the 16th of November 2004, Valve Software released one of the most idolized games of all time, a game that revolutionized the gaming industry and completely changed the FPS genre. That game was Half-Life 2. Back when I was growing up, my dad and myself were big FPS fans. We played Quake, Unreal Tournament, Halo Combat Evolved, and the original Half-Life. When Half-Life 2 was officially announced, we were super excited to experience the next part of the story and see how far they had come in those five years of development. Almost 16 years later on the making of this video, and the game is still listed on the best games of all time. It's still got a massive loyal following, and after Half-Life Alex's success, Half-Life 2 is still being discussed online and played around the world with maybe an insight into another Half-Life game coming out within the next few years. But I wanted to go back, take as much of a neutral stance as possible and get rid of those rose-tinted glasses as I wanted to see if this game was really that incredible experience that everyone praised back in the day. Was this truly a game that deserved all the awards it got? Was it a gamer's game and was it honestly a revolution for the FPS genre and the gaming industry? After playing through all 15 hours of the campaign I realised now that I am 26 that this game has matured into something even better than I remember when I was 11 and I still think is one of the best FPS games or just games in general I have ever played. So in this video I want to talk about all the features Half-Life 2 had and stating to you lovely viewers the reason why I absolutely loved Half-Life 2 and why I think it's one of the best FPS or just games of all time. We've been rather busy in your absence, Mr. Freeman. When I saw this E3 2003 trailer, I was blown away. It really was like watching the first ever motion capture game or that first piece of revolutionary technology being unveiled to audiences. The level of detail in Half-Life 2's animations really won me over from the offset. And although graphics shouldn't really mean everything, Half-Life 2 proved that it wanted to be more than just a good shooter and a good game. It wanted to be a piece of technology, a slice of history, and a game that pushed the industry into a new direction. Pay attention, Mr. Freeman. I'm only going to say this once. What made Half-Life 2 that extra piece of special was just how much detail went into every character within the game. The facial animations in every NPC you come across really helps expand the story into miniature human stories. Alex within the game is a perfect example of how incredible a job Valve did with its animations. She looks awkward at times, she rolls her eyes, she crosses her arms when she's not impressed, and she just always expresses what she is thinking when she is speaking. There's so much life to her as a character, and because of the technology behind it, it makes her instantly likeable and relatable. The other thing to note is that this game has no real cutscenes. This makes those interactions feel so much more immersive than any other game I'd played. The story comes from their actions and their small emotions that you see during your journey. It's so great to progress through the game and get the story told to you through the characters within the game rather than pulling you out of the game and telling you what's going on through an in-game or artistic cutscene. Having living characters roam the world and emote you through facial or body animations really make you, the player, feel like City 7 or wherever you are is a living, breathing world. And honestly, Valve through their new Source engine were just able to create such an engaging experience that was so new and inventive and also never brought the player out of the experience. There are also other little things that the game did that made me absolutely love my journey throughout it. I absolutely love that every NPC you come into contact with keeps their focus on you when you get close to them. When you're in the lab and Barney or Isaac Kleiner are talking to you, they always meet your eye line, even if you're just standing on a table or in the corner or something, they are always looking at you. This isn't a new thing I don't think, I mean Halo Combat Evolved did it and I'm pretty sure some older games like Half-Life Classic did it, but the fact that the characters always look at you in a lifelike way makes you know that this is important and you are pulled into that world again. There feels like there is an urgency with what they're actually saying as they're speaking directly to you. Within actual levels as well, one of the great things I absolutely adore, especially in the mission Follow the Freeman, is that the NPCs really look up to you as a character and that is a progressive thing you experience throughout the game. But if they follow you into a room and then you want to get back out of that room, if they are blocking the 
way, they will acknowledge you and quickly say, sorry, Dr. Freeman, and back up out of your way. It's such a minor thing that was really handy as they didn't block the way all the time, but it was also a display of in-game personal space, and it's really quite funny because it gives all the NPCs a bit of character as they show respect to Gordon Freeman. But then there is also the physics engine, and quite honestly, without Half-Life 2, I don't think we'd see a lot of the types of games that we get nowadays. The use of this revolutionary physics engine just completely changed the way the game worked as a whole. I absolutely love how it's first displayed to you through this moment here with the can. The game pretty much encourages you to pick it up and throw it at the combine, but the whole scripted nature of this encounter is just great as he won't let you progress until you pick it up. Throughout the whole game, the physics just opens this whole new way of playing. Gone is the time of Half-Life 1 where you are there just to shoot and platform from one part to the next. Now your whole gameplay style has completely changed and let's be honest, there's no real set way to play this game. You want to kill enemies with a barrel? Fine, pick it up and chuck it at the combine. You want to create a car barrier to block gunfire? Well, you, you can do that. Half-Life 2 is more than a generic FPS shooter. It really is a test of players' skills and intelligence and I think that's why it's always called a game as game. There's no limitations to what you can do in combat and in venturing through the levels, and I am sure because of this amazing physics system, speedrunners have found a way to venture through levels in some of the most inventive ways possible. But the physics also really created some fantastic puzzles which no one had really done before. Some of them are not even that complex, let's be honest. One is literally putting cinder blocks on one part of the seesaw. It's such a quaint puzzle that really stumped me when I first played this game back in 2004 because honestly I had never done anything like this in the game before. These puzzles that are dotted through the game just make that playing experience so much more fun. It breaks up the gunplay sections, it makes it feel like a classic Half-Life puzzle section that evolves it into the modern gaming world. Figuring out this sort of puzzle here where you can throw the explosive barrel into the barnacles was super satisfying and it's also obvious that this is exactly what Valve wanted you to do. I mean the fact that they also give you an achievement for taking out five of them shows you that this is what they intended for the player to do. Which actually brings me on to one thing I think Valve did incredibly well within Half-Life 2. Throughout modern games now, one of the things that bothers me most is how gameplay is stopped or ruined by pop-up tutorials that remind you that you are playing a video game, but also ruin the anticipation of an encounter. Doom Eternal especially does this, but it also doesn't allow for any experimentation within a situation, and it just kind of makes you feel like an idiot and that the game is constantly holding your hand through the situation. Half-Life 2 literally drops you into City 17 and goes, right, there you go, have fun. Nothing is explained to you throughout the game. Everything is up for experimentation and you learn along the way. If this game had tutorials then puzzles just would not be rewarding and progression just wouldn't be as fun. I got lost a lot of times within this game as I failed to figure out puzzles in front of me whilst getting fired by Combine but when you do figure it out you feel great and you are more encouraged to venture forward to the next part of the game. Puzzles are there to be solved by players obviously but because of the way Half-Life 2 is set up from the start of the game teaching you the basics of picking things up and throwing them, when you get further into the game you start realizing that things can be moved. Gravity is a big factor and weight works the same way it does in real life. So for example this puzzle here has a ramp. It has a lift which looks like it goes down. It has a rope attached to it from the ramp and right above it you have a dishwasher which is in a very precarious position. The game doesn't tell you that you have to look for a heavy item that can help. It doesn't tell you you need to activate the ramp. You just have to figure it all out. All it really takes is a bit of experimenting. For example if you put some of the smaller items that are near the cage with within that cage, you'll notice that the lift goes down a little, meaning that if you have a heavier object within it, it will go right down and activate the ramp. So putting two and two together, you soon figure out that this dishwasher, which is just above the cage, would do the job. I love how this game makes you feel intelligent by solving pretty simple puzzles, but that implementation of the physics engine just makes it so much more rewarding. But it's not just puzzles that do this. There are also the weapon invisible tutorials and the ones within the world. During this part of the mission where you go into the building, you'll notice that there is a revolver on the table, a new weapon for your arsenal. When you pick it up directly in front of you, a couple of combines come out, giving you the chance to test this new weapon you literally just acquired. There's no tutorial which shows you what type of gun it is, it just lets you have a small practice range in front of you so you can see how powerful it actually is. The same applies with the gravity gun. Whilst yes, I suppose you have a small tutorial section within the lab throwing the ball with dog, it makes sense to 
to the overall story, but it's also a fun and immersive way of teaching you how the gun actually works. But then when you go into Raven's home, when you get into that first building, you will be shown a ton of sores on the wall, with one impaling a zombie which has been cut in half. When you try and venture forward, you will be stopped by this bench. When you go to clear the way, the first thing you'll pick up is one of the sores lodged in the wall. The second you pick it up, a zombie walks directly in front of you from around the corner. And after learning you can fire the gravity gun through the very well done invisible tutorial with Dog and the Bull, you realize you can fire this saw at the zombie. And then as soon as you do, it slices it in half. Suddenly you learn that pieces of environment can kill the zombies and you don't have to be as reliable on your guns within this mission, especially as there is a lack of ammo as you venture through. Later on in the level there is also this part where there is a zombie trapped within a small cage. There is a pipe that goes from it to a gas canister and when you turn it on there is a clear gas noise. And then when you fire your gun at the cage to kill the zombie it will ignite and completely set fire to it. Once again thanks to the great setup to the level and the player's experimentation you have now learned that zombies can be killed with fire and you can use gas canisters to ignite them. There's no tutorial that tells you that this zombie can be killed by doing this. This is all down to the player to experiment within the level. With every gun, every level, there are so many moments that just open up options for the players. There's never a moment where the NPCs or the game tells you that how to operate things or solve puzzles. You are focused to learn as you go. And that to me is what labels the game as a gamer's game. Its whole design is brilliant and it really just adds to that immersion. But speaking of level design, that brings me on to the next thing I absolutely adored within Half-Life 2 and that was its connectivity of each level. I mentioned earlier that Half-Life 2 doesn't have a single cutscene. Well, in fact, there are only two cutscenes and they're at the beginning and the end of the game. But during all of the gameplay, nothing is broken up at all. And to be fair, those cutscenes are still within the actual gameplay itself. One of the things that stood out to me within Half-Life 2 was the fact that levels just kept merging into each other. You went from City 17 to the Waterworks to Raven's Home to the Coast and Nova Prime, which are all so different in design without any real breaks in play, cutscenes or loading title cards. The whole way of progressing the story is just so fluid. It does technically flash up a loading message on the screen, but let's be honest, you aren't taken out of the game completely, especially if you're running this game on a modern PC. That loading won't take long at all and will throw you back into to the action instantly. In fact, I lost track of what mission I was playing at times. I was just so focused on where I was going and what I needed to do. Let's be honest, apart from when the game flashes up the mission title, there aren't really any specific mission levels. All of Half-Life 2 for me was pretty much just one level. Having this fluidity to its level design is very reminiscent of the original game and what old FPS shooters used to play like as you venture through different corridors in an extremely linear manner. But the fact that Half-Life 2 kept its fluidity to its level design, as well as having large maps that had hidden areas, large vistas like in Lost Coast, and completely different lighting and settings like in Ravenholm, it really is quite incredible. Looking back, I can't really think of any other games other than God of War and Half-Life 2 that had large open areas that all flowed together nicely without breaking your experience up completely. Even then, God of War had cutscenes, and yes, granted it's the same camera shot throughout, but Half-Life 2 only really has one break in play as you teleport back to the lab. Apart from that, the experience is completely completely fluid and it was incredible to experience. How they came up with the map design is just a phenomenal piece of architecture and level design. No wonder Half-Life games take so long to make, it's because the fluidity of levels must take so long. But having this seamless transition from one location to the next through NPC dialogue and the use of really clever tunnels that load the next level really adds to the story in an extremely positive way. Once again your immersion to this game is heightened because of how the player is never brought out of the world. One thing I will say is with a game like Bioshock Infinite the level designs are incredible. The way they go from one place to another makes so much narrative sense and it's a great experience. But having just that one loading screen title card really breaks up your experience and urgency to the story. Half-Life 2 never breaks that urgency. When you get separated from Alex when the tunnel caves in she doesn't say to you you'll have to go through Raven's home and then the screen goes black and a loading card pops up giving you a tip on how to use the gravity gun for example. Instead she says you need to get through Raven home quickly and and that's it you're off. That's your mission and there's nothing you putting out from that mission. The second you are told that, you are now playing Ravenholm. Every mission just flowed so nicely into one another that you never really felt like you pulled away from the story and it's the ultimate example of how level design can really immerse players. And speaking of Ravenholm, let's talk about why I love that level in particular.
When playing the original Half-Life, there was a sense that from the start, Valve wanted it to be a horror game. Sure, it had sci-fi elements and all the other themes, but there was a real focus on horror, especially as the zombies spawn within the first few minutes. Within Half-Life 2, the tone is completely different. The story has this focus on oppression, with a look at how terrifying the Combine invasion is on the humans. The world is dark, but in a tone-wise, but the actual atmosphere is bright and the world seems vast and full of life. There is a completely different tone to Half-Life 2 compared to Half-Life 1. But then almost two levels in, suddenly you are hit with this complete tone shift going into Ravenhut. Before the world seemed like it was familiar and you were getting to grips with how it all works. But then you are in this new environment which is so horrifying and dark and it makes you the player, well me at least, feel out of their comfort zone. Match that with the fact that Alex doesn't seem confident with Raymond Home at all makes you feel fearful when you venture through it. It's hard to remember when you're in Raven Home what the rest of the game actually feels like. When you're in it, it's like you're playing something like Resident Evil or a completely different game to what you played when in the sewers of City 17. Not many games can pull off this tone change. Combat Evolved did it with the reveal of the Flood and I really feel like Valve did an absolutely amazing job with this level design. It catches you completely off guard. It makes you feel way out of your comfort zone and with the inclusion of the terrifyingly fast zombies and the other horrible head crabs, you feel like you are playing that horror game Valve envisioned at the start when they first penned Half-Life down. Whilst Ravenholm terrified the life out of me when I was younger, I have now come to absolutely idolise it as a brilliant piece of level design that when added to all the other levels creates this overall masterpiece of a game. Half-Life 2 is obviously a sequel to the first and after the abrupt and awesome way the first ended, there was always a wonder on how it would come back and where we would be this time. Half-Life 2 did things totally different to the first. In Half-Life 1, Gordon Freeman was really seen as the hero of the day and the go-to man from the start of the game. You were able to control the people around you, everyone looked up to you from the start and you were a defined character. You were the hero known as Gordon Freeman. Whilst you still play as Gordon Freeman in Half-Life 2, when you enter to City 17, you feel fully like a blank slate. The people on the train don't know who you are, and as you venture the world, most NPCs away from the main characters of the story don't really acknowledge you as much of a hero as they did in the first. They only really know about the man who has gone against the Combine and has threatened their rule. But what made Half-Life 2 stand out compared to the first is every action you do within the game helps boost your character's reputation. You aren't seen as this hero from the offset. Your actions as you venture through the levels make people respect you more and by the end when you have a small army following and idolizing you you feel like they aren't following you because you are the main character and the immediate hero Gordon Freeman you feel like you have earned their respect by defending the revolutionists homes taking out combine helicopters surviving the horrors of Ravenholm and taking over Nova Prime the way the game shows progression adds to that story Gordon Freeman isn't that hero scientist you were given the role of playing as in Half-Life 2 everything you do every action you take affects the world and suddenly the player is Gordon Freeman, not an in-game character that everyone knows from the start. If that makes any sense. The new additions to the arsenal really give you so much more choice when going into battles and every single gun has its own purpose. From the RPG to take out massive groups of enemies or choppers to the combined burst machine gun which fires a bouncing explosive which can wipe out a group of combine in a small room all the way to the super handy shotgun when facing zombies in close quarter combat. The addition of the crowbar is such a lovely callback to the original game and was a perfect piece of fan service. Same applies to the additions of Barney, Eli and Isaac. Valve clearly knew that there was a law of following to the original Half-Life because of its amazing level design, its puzzles and its gameplay. Going into Half-Life 2, a lot of these elements are still there, but they have just been completely elevated to make them really, really stand out. When I think back on the best games I have ever experienced, Half-Life 2 is easily up there. But when I think of it as an FPS game, I don't think it's fair to label it as just that. For me, Half-Life 2 is more than just an FPS game. There are just so many other features implemented into this game that makes it feel like its own genre. Its platforming sections are well thought out and rewarding, its puzzles are nothing short of genius, its combat is extremely satisfying even to today's standards with such a variety of choice in your actions thanks to your incredible choice of arsenal 
original. Its story is actually brilliant with a really immersive way of approaching it with no cutscenes, engaging NPCs and a way of making the player feel like a true hero of the day. Its level designs are nothing short of architectural genius and its all round design is just absolutely brilliant. Maybe I can't shake those rose tinted glasses, maybe I am filled with that nostalgia of playing it when I was 11 years old or maybe it's just that this game is still to this day one of the most immersive and engaging games I have ever played with some incredibly well thought out gameplay mechanics that makes the player feel rewarded every time they pick it up. There's a reason Half-Life 2 won so many awards and has played a big impact on the gaming industry and I think it's fair to say that give it 5 years, 10, 20 or 50, Half-Life 2 will still be a great game to go back and play. It still holds up extremely well and it is a piece of gaming history, pushing the whole industry into a new technological age. Half-Life Alex has shown that Valve are still the company that pushed the barrier for technology, playing around with new mechanics that no one has played with before and hopefully within the next few years we will see Half-Life 3 or another Half-Life game that continues to push the industry in a new direction and engages players like Half-Life 2 did. So there we go, that is why I love Half-Life 2. Do you guys feel the same though? If so, let me know what you loved about it in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video or found it somewhat engaging, then please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. This video took way longer than I thought, so all the engagement would be really really appreciate it. I'll leave my discord and my twitter in the bio below so if you want to join that to continue the chat make sure you uh, join but that's totally up to you. But that is all for now thank you so much for watching again stay safe in this weird time we live in and I shall see you all in the next one. Cheers.